talk with us. He's a Swiss digital nomad that enjoys building solutions online. He is also a partner at HumanMade, a top-tier WordPress, uh, sorry, a top-tier WordPress agency and VIP partner. There, he oversees the growing product of product portfolios such as Nomad Base, Happy Tables, BD Remote, and so on. Today, he will discuss the possible path to, this, to success for anyone interested in working with WordPress remote working or generally being part of this movement. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Noel Talk to the stage. Is this work? Yeah, cool. Who's coming to the after party? Oh, come on. So much excitement. 8 o'clock, as of car, is that right? Cool, be there. I'll be there. Everybody else will be too. Um, so, I came across this in, uh, interesting infographic the other day, and it shows the most popular jobs in the US um, from years ago to now. Uh, so back in 1978, let me see if I can move this out of the way a bit before I do something stupid. Uh, so back in 1978, uh, the most popular jobs were farmers and secretaries in the US. Quite interesting. Uh, 20 years later, we see that most farmers and secretaries have been pushed out, and we now have a lot of truck drivers. So welcome to globalization. Um, but interestingly enough, we also have a little blue dot, and that says computer analyst. Um, and that was, you know, good 20 years ago. Um, so fast forward to now, and we're seeing that we don't really have computer analysts anymore, we have software developers. So a lot of people like us. Personally, I created my first website in 1995. When I created that website, um, I thought I was doing something wrong. I was like, you're not supposed to create websites. Nobody does that. It's not a real job. Um, Ten years later, 2005, I still didn't think that was a real job. You know, it's still not a real profession. And now, 2015, 2016, it's just another job. It's a regular profession, man. Which is quite amazing. So, whilst this sort of work today is more or less standardized now. Um, and even actually quite popular, right? Because there, there's a certain lifestyle that comes with it. You know, you, you can travel around if you find the right um, employer or you're a freelancer, so you can work remotely, you can become one of these you know, digital nomads or whatever, uh, and you can have quite a lot of fun with it. But this whole work thing is not the only thing that's changed, right? The web has also changed. Web design is not just web design anymore. We've gone from having websites that are purely informational, uh, aesthetic, to ones that are functional and that are part of our day-to-day -day lives. And I think the, the, the like button, or what it has become to it, or what it's become over the years, is a great metaphor for that. You know, so maybe it used to be just a simple button that you press and it has a little thumb ups, um, and now it's become something full of emotion for different uh, variety of emotions, and it's, it, it's really become um, a set of micro-interactions as opposed to just this little, you know, little button. Um, and we see that across a lot of different, um, oops, there we go, uh, there we go. Uh, and we see that across a lot of different platforms nowadays, that we have a lot of responsiveness built in. There we go. It's my friend's dog, it looks a bit intimidating. Um, but we, we see how we have these kind of things. Susan, we'll have breakfast today? Yes, there it is. Um, uh, maybe I'll pick like, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the, the change happens instantly, right? Uh, you don't switch pages, you, you don't do anything like that. It, it's right there. Uh, John, you know, he's complaining about the weather, you know, he's found something else to, to rant about, right? Um, you know, I might click like, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. Um, but you, you guys get it, you know? like. It, it, we, we live in this very sort of interactive um, web now where we can do everything in a single view without refreshing the page. Right? Like it, it, it's, it's really incredible that we have these, these, these experiences whereby um, it, it's really hard to describe, I guess, in, in the form that we're, we're able to extract value out of uh, just a few minutes or even a few seconds of browsing a website and to be able to understand or find what we're looking for. Um, so, so the bar or the set of expectations that users have today in terms of what they expect from a website is, is incredibly high. 
And this is obviously not to say that you know, all websites are becoming platforms or web applications or you know, these complex tools that need to be like that. Um, but rather that consumers are just seeking these experiences now. The modern front end for a, a lot of websites is JavaScript power. It is bringing in data from various APIs. Um, and one way or another, you know, it has very fine on-page interactions. Um, so in many ways, the kind of work we do, you know, with WordPress and everything else, will start gravitating towards these, these, these higher sets of expectations. So if, if platforms and web applications and all these cool tools I showed you represent one end of the spectrum, then what we used to do normally or naturally represents the other, you know, the old way of doing things. Um, and I came across this great example of this old way of doing, thing, uh, doing things last week. Um, I saw a company online, um, they're advertising web services, and they're doing per page pricing. Do you guys remember, do you, do you ever see that, where it's like, uh, uh, they charge $200 you know, per page, or $400 for two pages, maybe get a discount if you have three pages. Um, it's really weird because you know we just don't live on a web that works that way anymore. Do you imagine calling the company up and being like, "Hey, uh, I'd like to have a website." They're like, oh, how many pages? Yeah, one page. Uh, cool. So I'll be two hundred dollars. Any other features? Yeah, you can just scroll. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> how does this work, right? Like, <laughs> it just doesn't. Um, but in all honesty, like with, with this idea of the, this, this past and, and, and the future in mind of the different ways of doing things, um, most people building websites are somewhere in the middle, right? And that definitely includes us uh, as the WordPress community. And this is where I'd say that WordPress, you know, as a collective of freelancers and agencies and, and all that kind of stuff, can sometimes feel a bit stuck in, in time. Right? As if we're, we're part of this closed ecosystem. You know, we might go to work camps, but not JavaScript conferences. We might go to work camps, but not like a PHP conf or whatever it is. Um, and not too long ago, people who sold web services as part of WordPress um, would install WordPress, maybe a premium theme, uh, add some plugins in, uh, on top of that, and maybe do some custom CSS. Uh, and today, that's evolved to include custom theme development and probably some like light plug-in functionality. Um, and when I talk to people in our community, I often get the impression that, um, that people view WordPress as this self-contained unit, right? So that um, you create everything inside of WordPress and that is the, the product you sell. So I'm, I'm still not sure if, if calling yourself a WordPress developer is, is the right sort of wording or if you should just be calling yourself a developer. Um, but let's try to figure that out. <coughs> Generally speaking, though, I think we need a, a different perspective. Um, that WordPress is a tool which is used with other tools, right? uh, and not a solution which is simply deployed with themes and plugins, and then those themes and plugins and WordPress go live somewhere out on the countryside by themselves, you know, and don't talk to anything else. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say in this roundabout way is that moving forward in WordPress, is a lot more about moving out of WordPress, um, yet continuing to use it as you know, a foundation or a platform to manage larger ideas. So if we consider the traditional WordPress website, um, this is what it's usually like. It's front-end power, uh, it's WordPress theming, we use WP Admin for all the content, and we're able to easily install plugins and themes from uh, the repository, I mean, from WordPress.org or other platforms. If we go a step further, we have a publishing platform, right, where we're still using WordPress admin, but then we're disconnecting the front end um, and using it in a decoupled fashion. So we're using something as uh, React or Backbone or Angular, things that you've seen today, whereby we have this JavaScript power front end and we're able to do whatever we want on the front end, but then communicate. Um, very nicely with the WordPress backend through the WordPress REST API plugin, and this is where you know this is where we're we're kind of at now in, in terms of a lot of clients are asking for this kind of product, where they're getting the best of both worlds. 
They're getting uh, JavaScript front end, which is the, the, browser, the language of the browser, and they're, they're receiving WordPress as a back end tool so that people can alter content, manage content, change it, whatever it is. Um, so it is, it is this great situation. The next step beyond the publishing platform is the application platform whereby we may not even use WP Admin anymore in any significant way to create content, but rather just to capture it and manage it. Um, I know this sounds confusing right now, but I'll show you guys some examples. So Human Made, um, which was briefly mentioned before, is the company that Tom, Joe, and I own. Uh, we're about 38 people around the world. Uh, and we've done work for Skype, Airbnb, PayPal, uh, a bunch of different companies. Uh, most recently, I think it was Greenpeace that we launched, so that was pretty fun. Um, one key difference, I guess, between us and a lot of other agencies is we don't really consider ourselves a WordPress company. Uh, we, we try to stay open um, to different ideas, which is why we consider ourselves a technology company, even though our work is 100% WordPress. So earlier this year, we organized uh, a day of rest, uh, which was uh, actually, quite a few people in this room were there, um, which was like a conference on you know using the REST API. And it was really amazing seeing all the the use cases there, um, and this, all the examples were really uh, were mostly around decoupling uh, the front end again. So what I was talking about before in terms of using WordPress as a publishing platform as opposed to just closed WordPress you go, uh, setup, I guess. Um, one of the great examples here, and it's a really simple example because it does highlight the, the, the actual decoupled state, is that we, this is our website for it, it's WordPress powered, but it uses the React front end, right? so it uses React.js on the front end, uh, which means that when you click between uh, different tabs, um, it instantly loads, right? so there's no page switching, uh, so the experience is a lot quicker. And this is a very simple example of, of how that works. Uh, we, have, we also have a small little button in the bottom left which shows the API request for those that are interested. But this project is actually available on GitHub. Um, so you guys can all check that out. That's super easy um, to, to, to see, to see how it's done. Uh, but the basic setup and the principle here is that we're using it as a publishing platform. We have WordPress um, and then React grabs the data from WordPress and displays it. That's pretty straightforward for now. Um, it gets more complex when we start doing more things. So Happy Tables is another platform that we have for restaurants so that we aggregate all the different tools that they have. So you know, those terminals where they, they have the, where they receive tickets, you know, sort of the point of sale, uh, be it online orders, be it payroll, inventory, whatever it is. We try to aggregate a lot of that and then displays that they, uh, display that data on a dashboard. Uh, so this dashboard runs in, not really real time, but more like near time. Uh, so it's usually, you know, five or ten minutes delayed. But this is not, for the context of this, it's not a website. Right? It's a dashboard that sits on a wall. Um, yet WordPress is powering it. Similarly, we also send out emails based off that. Um, so WordPress could even be used in a scenario where there's no website at all. You know, there's no front end that's in the browser. We could be ingesting data from one place, processing it, uh, and capturing it within WordPress, and then sending it out back by email. Uh, so that's really a completely different use case. But in this case, all the servers and all the waiters of a given restaurant see their performance day for day. Um, so that's, that's also fun. To give you guys a bit of an overview of how that looks, um, we take in a bunch of data from different places, uh, store it within custom post types, and custom post types for me at least was the, the sort of turning point where I was like, this WordPress stuff is really cool. Um, I got into WordPress in 2009, and then custom post types came out in 2010, and it was just like, why, why is everybody else not getting so excited about this? You know, you can, you can create any kind of uh, data structure you want to, uh, to then be able to easily show again on your website. Um, so to me, custom post types and, and REST API together are incredibly powerful, yet they're not that complex. Let's look at another example. Um, Nomadbase is a tool that we have for people who consider themselves location independent or remote workers. 
um, nomadic, I guess. Uh, and we have a nice little tool here, which is a single page application, I guess, in that regard, where I can see now my entire travel map and history, um, and then also see who is in a particular city right now. And that's all fed in through Foursquare data, uh, Twitter check-ins, Instagram check-ins. Um, so we'll see here, like now, if we're on Singapore, uh, there's probably a couple of us here. Yeah, John's here, Gary's here, Shin's here, Mayo's here. Uh, so you can see, right? It's, uh, it's pretty fun, but again, all WordPress powered. And again, so it's a similar setup where we're taking information from a lot of different APIs, and then processing it, capturing it inside WordPress, and then pushing it out to different places. Um, so this is, this is the real nature of WordPress as an application platform. Who saw the, the, the talk on Amazon Alexa before? No, it was only you guys. He did, are you here? Uh, because you had such a great talk on using WordPress in a GUI-less fashion, um, I wanted to remind everyone um, what you know that was. So the the right side might be a bit more creative and it has a bit more imagination, but the left side is certainly correct. Um, and that was a great example uh, where you know Hida was using uh, Amazon Echo to give it speech functions. It was feeding into WordPress and then other stuff, right? So it's like it's really really cool. Uh, I was really surprised to see that here. Um, jokes aside, if, if we come back to the idea of, you know, what are the jobs out there and what can we, or, or sort of the popular jobs, um, where is this all going? And let's, let's imagine for once that, you know, software developer becomes insanely popular everywhere. How do you, as a developer or someone working predominantly in WordPress, stay ahead of the game, for lack of a better term? I think the first thing is learning JavaScript. Um, I know it's something that's said a lot, uh, especially in the last year, uh, but it is insanely valuable. Uh, WordPress is you know, mostly built on PHP, um, and it is a back-end tool, but if you want to be able to use the full power of WordPress, you have to understand how it fits in the larger ecosystem of things. The second is Start with the end in mind. So really, if you have a vision of building something, stick to that vision and work your way down in terms of what you can and can't build, as opposed to thinking of, hey, these are the tools I have at the bottom, and then trying to work your way up from that. Uh, because that's, that's kind of the, that'll limit you a lot in terms of uh, this WordPress way of doing things, or you know, some, some older way of doing things. Whereas there's a lot of cool things you can do with JavaScript. There's, there's really, I mean, you can, you can build anything you want. That's the beauty of it, right? So having this some sort of unlimited vision in that regard is really, really important, I think. Um, and lastly, the, the, the challenge I propose to you know, anyone who develops on WordPress is to make it invisible. Uh, or, you know, in the key case, GUI-less, right? Um, it's, it's whereby WordPress uh, takes a back seat and you know, plays a, an important function, but then allows you to, you know, still do a lot of cool things. In this case, this is our Slack bot. Uh, who uses Slack in here? Yeah, a bunch of you. So this is our Slack bot that's, you know, if I type in where is null, um, you know, it just pumps it out and, and saves it in chat. But this is, again, WordPress powered, right? So this is the same Nomad base app I showed you before, where we ingest the data, store it in WordPress, uh, we created a couple of custom endpoints for it, and Slack now is able to, you know, to, to use that data. So if, if you can take one thing away from this talk, um, it's that it's not only about working inside of the WordPress ecosystem, right? But understanding that WordPress is but just one uh, component in a much larger industry um, that is growing in many different beautiful ways, right? So at the end of the day, Build cool shit and see you at the after party. Thank you. Is there anyone with questions?
Can I get that code for where is null? Uh, sure. Well, we might have a veto program for that. Uh, nomad base fine. And just nomad block. Uh, well, would, would you, you want to use that? Yeah, I think I want to not for a flight I'm happy to work with me. Questions? Cool. Uh, if I want to get the, uh, the dashboard for the, uh, for the restaurant for the FNB industry, how do I get it? Uh, for a restaurant or to play with GitHub? Uh, for the restaurant. Ah, okay. Um, so the, the dashboard is, um, just to go back to, let's see. You're talking about this, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, so the dashboard in this case is a web view. So it, it's open on Chrome or whatever on any dashboard. So we usually purchase the, the dashboard for a restaurant. And then we have a full screen button. Um, which is just like a JavaScript line that makes it full screen on, on the tablet. Um, but yeah, that's how we, we built it. Um, so it's, it, it's not connected to the dashboard or pre-installed on the dashboard, right? It just requires an internet, internet connection. Um, if it's for a restaurant specifically, then um, yeah, we should call. <laughs> Questions? Cool. Thank you.